Okay, so we're going to look at um, a couple more examples of using u substitution. So let's take a look at this example where we have the integral 5e to 2x dx. Now what I need to do first is I need to figure out what is my inside function. So e to the 2x is probably not going to be my inside function. Um, let's see, what else could be? Oh, well usually I have e to the x, but here I have e to the 2x. So that 2x is probably going to be my inside function. So we're going to let u equal 2x, which remember, if I take the derivative of that, I'm going to get du equals 2dx. Remember, the reason we get the du there is because if I take the derivative of u, that would be du over dx equals 2, and then you just multiply both sides by dx. So let's go ahead and do that substitution, but really quick before I do, notice that I just have a dx here. I don't have a 2dx. So what I can do is I can divide both sides by 2, which would give me 1 half du equals my dx. Great, so now if I plug this in, what I'm going to have is the integral from, or just the integral, 5 e to the, and instead of 2x, remember, I let that equal u times, and now instead of dx, what I'm going to have is 1 half du. Now note that 5 and 1 half, those are both constants, and if I'm multiplying by a constant, I can just move them out in front. So that is now going to become 5 halves times the integral e to the u, du, which equals, well, what's the antiderivative of e to the u? That is going to be to the u. Don't forget plus u. Now, it's worth remembering that when we were asked to evaluate this integral, well, it's in terms of x and not u, so we want to wrap this up by rewriting our answer not with u, but in terms of x. So our final answer will be 5 halves e to the 2x That would be our final answer. Great, and remember, we can check our answer by taking the derivative. Now, let's look at one more example of this. So, let's look at taking the let's look at taking the antiderivative of two cosine of x times sine of x. So, what I want to do now is I want to take a look at this, and I want to think, hmm, well, what's going to be my inside function? Well, here, it's kind of hard to figure out what my inside function is, because nothing's really inside of anything else. But what I do know is that I know that the antiderivative of cosine is sine, and I know, well, I know the derivative of sine and cosine are related, so I'm just going to pick one of these randomly to be my u. So let's do... Let's do cosine. So let's let u equal cosine of x, which means that du will equal negative sine of x. Yeah. Now here, I have a sine x dx, but it's not negative. I can fix that by just multiplying both of these by negative. So I'll have negative du equals positive sine x. So now what happens is that this becomes, what can I do with this 2? I just move it out in front because I'm multiplying by constant. Sine, that becomes u. And then sine of x dx, well, that becomes negative du. Times negative du. Remember, multiplying by a negative, that's a constant, so I can actually move that out in front. So I'll have negative 2 times the integral u du, which is going to be negative 2 times, well, the antiderivative of u is u squared divided by 2 plus b. Those twos cancel out. So what I get is I get negative u squared plus b. Now, just like last time, our question was in terms of x, so we want our solution to be in terms of x. So that is going to be negative and let's see, what did I let u equal? Oh yeah, I let it equal cosine. 
negative cosine of x squared plus b. Great. So something that you might want to try to do is try to do this only instead of letting u equal cosine, why don't you try by letting u equal sine and see if you get a different answer. And if you do, go ahead and take the derivative and see if the derivatives match up. All right, we have one more example we are going to do. And this example is we are going to have the antiderivative of x squared divided by x to the third plus 1 dx. Now, when I'm looking at this guy, again, I don't see like a definite inside or outside. But what I do notice is that down here I have an x cubed plus 1, and up here I have an x squared. Now that's interesting because I know if I take the derivative of x cubed, I'm going to get an x squared. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to say, okay, let my u equal x to the third plus 1, which means du is going to equal 3x squared dx. Now, looking at this top part, it's kind of hard to see, but we're multiplying this entire thing by the dx. So this is actually an entire term on its own. So I have an x squared dx, but I don't have a 3x squared. So again, just like last time, I can just divide both sides by 3, and I'll get 1 third du equals x squared dx. Great, so now I can start substituting things in. So let's see, this whole thing I can replace with 1 third du divided by an x cubed plus 1, I can replace that with u. And before I start taking the antiderivative, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. So this is a constant, that 1 third, so I can move it out in front. So that's going to be 1 over u times du. Now remember, the antiderivative of 1 over u, this is a special antiderivative, so that's going to be 1 third times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Now, just like before, I know I sound like a broken record, but our original problem was in terms of x, so we want this to be in terms of x. So our actual final solution is 1 third times the natural log of the absolute value of x to the third plus 1. And don't forget, as always, 